Hey guys, James here with MoneyZG. In this one, I'll show you how to trade cryptocurrency futures on Binance. Trading futures gives you a lot more control over your trades in terms of the order types and strategies you can use. Plus, you can leverage up your trading if you're happy to take the extra risk. This one is quite in-depth, so all the timestamps for the different sections will be in the description for you. If you don't have a Binance account yet, click the link at the top of the description to sign up and you can follow along. Let's get stuck right in then with Binance Futures. Now you can come to binance.com forward slash futures. There's its own site right here. You can see Binance Futures. You can come and sign up. Now I would recommend just having a Binance account first. So if you just go to binance.com, then you can sign up for an account, get everything set up. Then you can go to derivatives and then just click into either US dollar or coin futures. I'll explain the difference between these uh, later on in the video, but you can see Binance Futures. You can trade coin futures, US dollar futures, and then Binance leverage tokens are part of futures as well. I'm not gonna go over these in this tutorial. I have a separate video for Binance leverage tokens. You can check out the Binance playlist for that one. I'm not gonna go through options because options and futures are different. If you do come right to the Binance Futures page, you can see Binance Futures you can do up here. And then you can just go to your wallet. Now, if you have a Binance account, that will go straight through to your Fiat and Spot wallet. And the accounts are interlinked. So once you have one, you don't need to really do much in terms of signing up for the other. If you don't have an account yet with Binance at all, just click the link in the description, go through. It takes five minutes to set up. Once you get all your details and some assets on account, you can go ahead and start trading futures. I'm going to come straight through to the trading screen then and you can either click this one right here or this one right here. It's going to take you straight through to the same page or if you are on the Binance homepage, like I said, just click one of these. It all takes you through to the same trading screen, which you can see here. So as you're watching a video about trading futures, I'm assuming that you probably have quite a decent knowledge about trading in the first place. And you're probably up to speed with most of the basics of trading, uh, like limit orders and market orders and how the order book works. If you really are a beginner, then I have some beginners tutorials that take you step by step through trading. So definitely look at the Binance and trading playlist on the channel. But for this video, I'm going to tell you the biggest differences between the trading screen and the normal spot market screen. So firstly, one of the main differences is that you'll see this up here. Now, this is all of the contracts, all of the futures contracts that you could actually go ahead and trade. This is very different to trading in the spot market where you just have currency pairs. In futures, we are actually trading something completely different. We're trading a perpetual future or a future with an expiry date, but we're actually trading futures and we're trading price differences rather than the underlying assets. So you can see here that this is a Bitcoin US dollar tether perpetual future. And then we have Bitcoin cash against the US dollar and then Ethereum against the US dollar. So you can see these are actually different contracts that you can go through and trade. And then you can see uh, down here, we have all the different contracts as well. So you can actually search, for example, I have BTC right here. So this would be Bitcoin futures and you can trade this against various other assets. Actually on Binance futures, you can trade against US dollar tether and then you can trade against Binance US dollar or BUSD. It's gonna be pretty much exactly the same because USDT and BUSD are both US dollar stable coins anyway. So they're gonna be almost exactly the same price overall. Then one of the other main differences is this up here, cross and 5x, as you can see. I'll get into that a little bit later in the tutorial. And then you can see this box, which is definitely different. You will not get this in the spot market. You can go long, but you can also go short. Now, this is different because we're actually trading a futures contract and we are not buying and selling Bitcoin. We're in the Bitcoin US dollar tether market right now. So with this, you can either go long a future or short a future very, very easily. That is something you cannot do when you trade the underlying asset. So let's say you wanna go short Bitcoin. Well, you kind of can't if you're trading in the spot market. If you don't have any Bitcoin to sell, then you can't sell Bitcoin. That is different with futures. You can definitely sell short the future and actually go short the price and then buy back at a lower price. And you can do that with futures. Other than that, on the right hand side, we do have some extras as well. Grid trading. I'm going to go through what grid trading is. It's basically like setting up a trading bot and you can do that with the futures screen on Binance. And there's a couple of different order types that you can use on Binance futures that you can't use in the spot market. You can see this TPSL. I'm going to go through what that is. It's a really great option to use. And I'm going to go through some of these uh, limit orders as well. Stop limit and stop market. Exactly how you'd use those. 
let's firstly come then to perpetual futures versus futures. So there's two types of futures contract that you can trade on Binance, a perpetual and then a future with an expiry date. So obviously the word perpetual means forever. A perpetual future literally means that the future that you're trading has no expiry date. So it just goes on and on and on. Now you might want to trade this if you don't want to actually go ahead and have your contract expire. So if you want to open a long position, for example, and you want to get into the market and you really just don't want the future to expire, you, you really don't want to close your position for a long time, then you might want to choose the perpetual future. It just goes on and your trade will never come to an end unless you actually go ahead and come out of your position. When it comes to normal futures, so I'm just going to type in here and I'm going to go to BTC like this and you can see that there's a quarterly future right here. Now, futures are often traded in quarters and they will have an expiry date at a certain time. If I just click through to this one, you can see that I'm now on the Bitcoin US dollar future and it has a quarterly expiration 0625. That means that this future expires on the 25th of June, 2021. The date today is the 10th of April, 2021. So this future will have an expiration of this date in June. You may wanna go ahead and trade this. So for example, if you just wanna take a bet on what the price of Bitcoin will be on the 25th of June, 2021, you can go ahead and trade this future. It will expire on that date though. And then obviously you're gonna be out of your positions. The reason why there are quarterly futures really goes back to why futures were invented in the first place, which was for traders to actually lock in prices in the future. When it comes to trading Bitcoin though, you might just wanna go and use the perpetual. So I'm gonna come down and look at the Bitcoin US dollar perpetual future. Next, I wanna come on to USDM versus coin M futures, and you can see this difference. So we have a US dollar stable coin, the S is for stable coin. That means that it's not actually US dollars. We're either trading US dollar tether or Binance US dollar, which are both stable coins. They represent the USD here. And then you have a coin future here. So the difference is which asset that you're using as collateral to open your futures position. So right now we're actually trading US dollar stablecoin futures because you can come down here and you can see the margin that I have on account or the assets that I have on account. It's actually US dollar tether as you can see here. So it means that the asset I have on account to actually fund my positions is going to be a stable coin denominated. It's either US dollar tether or it might be BUSD, the Binance US dollar. If I just switch over to Coin M futures, you should see when we come down here that the difference here is that Bitcoin is now on account as the asset that I'm going to use as collateral for my positions. Like I said with futures, you are not buying and selling the underlying asset. You're just entering into a contract for the difference in price between when you open and when you close your positions. The way that you are allowed to open and close bets and positions in the futures market is by providing the broker with collateral, basically having some insurance on account and some assets to go ahead and let the broker open trades for you. It depends what you have. If you have more Bitcoin, you might want to go for Coin M futures, but certainly there is a risk warning here. Let's say you have Bitcoin and account as collateral and you are way, way long Bitcoin. And let's say Bitcoin, so this is the Bitcoin chart now, let's say Bitcoin for some reason drops 15% in a day. Improbable, but possible. Now you have leverage at five times and we'll go through leverage, but let's say you're leveraged up 5X. That means you have assets on account in Bitcoin of around $10,000. Your position is $50,000 because you're 5X leveraged. Well, if Bitcoin drops 15%, you're actually in a big mess. The collateral that you had on account to fund your trades has dropped in value by 15%. So the amount of Bitcoin that you have, that value has dropped by 15%. This means you have less collateral on account to fund your open positions. But the position that you have, which is a long Bitcoin, has just also dropped 15% and you're leveraged five times, which could leave you in a really bad position where your position is in a big loss. And also the collateral you're using has also dropped in value, meaning that you might get way down actually into a low margin position or a low margin ratio. And this is a bad thing because if you don't have enough collateral on account to fund your positions, your broker can actually trade you out of those positions and essentially just say, hey, look, you've not got enough assets on account to fund your open positions. We're going to liquidate you and basically your losses are just solidified there and you'll be taken out and basically completely wrecked. 
So you may wanna just put US dollar futures on account because having US dollar as the assets, it's obviously gonna be less volatile in terms of the assets you have, but this is up to you. Next, we can come to using leverage. So right now in the US dollar stablecoin futures, you can see this cross and 5X. We can click on 5X first. This is the amount of leverage that you want to trade with. Because we're not trading the underlying asset here, the broker will give us leverage and we can maybe choose up to 125 times. Now, this is absolutely insane. You just absolutely shouldn't use this. Now, I can't give you any advice on what to use, but for sure, I mean, 125X is crazy. Even 10X is a lot. This is completely up to you and your choice, but most people will use maybe five or below leverage. In fact, you don't have to use any leverage at all. You can go down to 1X and just trade with what you have on account. This is up to you though, but if we just go to five here, what that essentially means is that if you have $10,000 on account, you can open positions worth $50,000. The reason for this is because that $10,000 that you have on account, that is collateral and insurance against losses. If you have a position that is worth $50,000 and it goes down 10%, then you'll be down $5,000. You still have $10,000 of assets and collateral on account, so you can fund that loss. That's absolutely no problem. The position that you have went down 10%. Of course, your collateral and your actual cash position is down 50%. You had a position of $10,000 and you're now down $5,000. You're down 50%. And this is because you're leveraged up. So your losses are exaggerated hugely. Of course, on the flip side, if you have an open position of $50,000 and it's up 10%, You've just made $5,000 on that trade and you're now up from your cash position at 50%. So leverage exaggerates both your losses and your wins. You do not have to trade with leverage. Like I said, you can trade at 1x if you're just getting started. Now coming to cross, you can either choose cross or isolated margin. Cross margin refers to having essentially the margin on your account across all your different positions. Let's say you have an open position in Bitcoin USD and another open position in Ethereum USD. Well, the collateral that you have on account is going to be used to fund both of those positions. Now they may be up or down in a different ratio, but the collateral that you have on account is going to be used to fund both of those positions simultaneously. If you wanna choose isolated margin, then what that means is you have a specific set of margin and collateral on account in terms of cash to fund each position separately. It really is up to you how you want to fund each position. You might want to say, well, one position is more important than others, so you wanna make sure that that is funded. And if others get close to being sold out, if you're making losses, then sell them out. I'll just use cross for this. So the collateral I have on account is used to fund various different positions together. Next up, we can choose to either go one way or in hedge mode. So I wanna come up to preferences. So click on this and go to preferences right here and then we can come down to position mode. So in position mode, you either have one-way mode or hedge mode. One-way mode, as you can see here, only allows you to open contracts in one direction. So let's say you're going long Bitcoin. You can't then go and open a completely separate trade that goes short more Bitcoin than you're long. It basically won't let you have two positions that are conflicting at the same time. This is really what I would recommend for most people. Hedge mode is different. You can open long positions and short positions in the same futures contract at the same time. It's a very niche use case. Most people are just gonna go to one way mode. So you might wanna go for one way mode there. And really that is the setup of futures. So you should now be up to speed with what everything is, what we're trading and how. Let's come through to actually trading an order then. So you can see the order book right here, and this is the Bitcoin chart. So doing very well at the moment, had a big spike overnight as of making this video. We can actually come and place some orders. So when you actually go and open a position in a future, like I said, you do not trade the underlying. You are not buying a certain amount of Bitcoin. You're simply funding bets and funding positions in Bitcoin. Now you can open a limit order or a market order. I'm assuming you know the difference here. If you've traded in the spot market for a long time, you will know the difference between limit and market orders. And you can just simply take the price and you can click this price. We'll be on 60,861. So let's just put 60,000. That can be a limit price for us. And then we can put an amount of Bitcoin. And this is the size of our trade right here. Now, as we come down, if I just click this off, 
you can see you can just enter a very normal limit order and you can come down and it will show you how much this is going to cost. So you're going to have to have 600 USD on account to fund this position. Like I said, with margin, you don't need to actually have the total amount of money to go and buy that Bitcoin. You just need a smaller amount of money to fund the position and fund any potential losses. A difference with the futures contract though is you can buy it and go long or simply sell and go short. This is betting that in the future, you will then close out your position at a higher price. And with selling short, you're basically going to go short Bitcoin and hope to eventually close out your position by buying long at a lower price. With futures, you can definitely put in a take profit level uh, as you are entering the trade. So let's say I just want to trade at market right now and I want to trade uh, half a Bitcoin like this then you can go long and buy that Bitcoin future and it will enter you in at the current market price. What you can also do is actually put a sell or a short order in above this price. So what you can do is go to a limit order like this and then put in a price above. So let's say 65,000 like this. And we had the open futures contract of half a Bitcoin. So make sure that the amount of Bitcoin actually matches up with what you've opened. And then you can go and just sell short on this. Now, what that will do is obviously buy you and go long some futures at the market price. And then what will happen is that an order will be placed on the order book around up here at 65,000. So you'll have one order. If we come down, you'll have one order that is a position. So that will be here. You'll be long half a Bitcoin. And then the open orders, you'll have a sell order of half a Bitcoin at 65,000. So if the price gets there, you will essentially pocket that difference. You can definitely do the opposite if you want to go short. You can enter an order, let's say half a Bitcoin, and then you can go short so you can sell. Now you're going to be short Bitcoin. And what you want to do is buy back at a lower price. So you sell high and buy lower. What you can do is then go a limit order like this and you can actually change to, let's say, 50,000. So you entered at 60,000 and you want to buy back at 50,000. You can then go and buy. So what that is going to do is place an order right down here at 50,000. Remember that you sold up here at 60 and you have a buy order at 50. If that happens, you will, of course, pocket the difference. You can also trade out of part of an order. So let's say you want to go long some Bitcoin right here. So you're going to go long half a Bitcoin, come down to buy and go long, and then that will be in your positions. So right now you have an open position of half a Bitcoin and you're long. You can also trade out of a part of that position. So let's say you're long half a Bitcoin. Now you actually want to just shave part of that position off. You want to half that position. What you can go and do is choose market order and then half of a half is obviously a quarter. So you want to trade out. Remember, you're long half a Bitcoin now. You can now go short or sell a quarter of a Bitcoin at the market price. Then obviously your open position in Bitcoin is going to be halved from half a Bitcoin to a quarter of a Bitcoin. So you can see you can definitely chop and trade around your positions. Another thing to highlight is what's called reduce only. So we're going to go to a market order. We're going to open a half a Bitcoin long. So you'll be half a Bitcoin long here and that will be in your open positions down here. Then you can also just tick this reduce only. So reduce only, as you can see, will only reduce your position and not increase it. So what that means is if you do actually open a position, so let's say I click reduce only and I want to go here to half a Bitcoin like this and I open a long position, it means that I can't open more positions in Bitcoin. It's basically like a little bit of insurance so that you don't actually do the wrong thing. Once I have an open position of half a Bitcoin in my open orders, I now can't go long any more Bitcoin because I'm on reduce only. What I can do, though, is basically sell short and cancel out my position or I can put a fraction of it. So maybe I want to half my position and go short. I can do that. The system will allow me to do that. It won't let me add to my position, though. I can only reduce my position. Another way to trade is using stop limits. So I'll just take this off and let's say we have an open position of half a Bitcoin right here. So we just buy it and go long and we're long half a Bitcoin. You can come up here and actually put in a stop limit order. So we're going to click on stop limit and you can see a couple of different options come up. So let's say I have an open position of Bitcoin at 60,000. So we're right here at 60,000. We have an open position here and we're long. We can enter a stop limit price very easily. Let's say our position moves against this. So we have an open position at 60. The price then moves down to around 55,000. So we are losing our position. We're down in our position. Now, what we can tell Binance to do 
is that if the price of Bitcoin reaches a certain price, we actually want to trade. So let's say we're losing 5,000 in Bitcoin. We can tell the system if Bitcoin gets down to 55,000, you can actually enter a sell order like this. The price we can put below the stop price. So let's say 54,000. Okay. What we're telling the system to do is that if the price of Bitcoin gets down to 55,000, I want you to sell out my position and the lowest price that I'm willing to trade at is 54,000. So the order will be triggered when the price is 55 and the lowest price that I can trade at is 54. So you're giving the system a range that you want to trade at. The reason why you would do this is because sometimes prices are extremely volatile and you just want to, instead of putting a limit order in, because with a limit order, you can only trade at one price only. It's not going to trade above or below that price. But with a stop limit, you can give Binance a range of prices that you want to trade at. So let's say we're in at 60, the price falls down to 55. We're making a loss. You're telling the system, hey, if the price gets to 55, you need to sell my position out because it's obviously a losing position. I need to get out. So if the price gets to 55, start selling my position and I'm happy to go all the way down to 54, but hopefully I'll be getting a much better price than that. So it just gives a range to the system for you to trade in. One thing that you have to make sure of is that the size of your order matches your open order. So if we went long half a Bitcoin at 60, then we need to make sure that this stop limit order matches our size half a Bitcoin using these parameters right here. You can also do the completely opposite for take profits. So you can use a stop limit as a take profit. Let's say we want to open a market order right now for half a Bitcoin and we're in at 60,800. That order will be down in our open orders and we'll have a long position of half a Bitcoin at 60,000. After we open that position, we can then go through to a stop limit order and let's say the market goes up. So we bought in at 60,000 and we want to sell out at 65,000. Well, once more, we can put in a stop price of 65,000 and then we can put in a price of 66,000. What we are now telling Binance is if I've bought in at 60 and the price goes up to 65, I think that's a great profit and I want to take some profits there. As soon as the price in the market hits 65,000, we are going to be selling and reducing our position. And of course, I'm happy to sell all the way up to 66,000. The price is not going to be 66,000 though. It's probably going to be 65,100 or 65,150. You may actually trade at a couple of different prices as the market moves around. Once again, it's important to put the exact size of your open order so that you can cancel out the order and essentially close out your position perfectly. The main difference then between a stop limit and a limit is that a limit only has one specific price that you can trade at and you cannot trade at any other price whatsoever. With a stop limit, it just gives the system a range of prices where you tell the system, hey, I'm happy to trade within this range. Another option to use apart from stop limit orders is stop market order. This is exactly the same as limit and market where limit you can choose a price and market you don't choose the price. With a stop market, again, you don't choose the price, but you tell the system when to open a market order. So let's say we are long Bitcoin at 60,000. So we'll go to market, we'll open half a Bitcoin long at 60,000. We can then go over to stop market and say, if the price goes up to 65,000, I'm making a good amount of money and I want you to sell out my position, close my position. We can then go to stop price right here and type in 65,000 and we have to make sure that we put half a Bitcoin in. And then obviously we're going to go through and sell short because we have a long position of half a Bitcoin at 60. To cancel out that trade, you then have to go short or sell out your position of half a Bitcoin at 65. The price you get though will not specifically be 65. You're only telling the system if the price reaches 65, I want you to trigger a market order for me and sell that half a Bitcoin. No prices are guaranteed here. You might get 65, you might get 64,990, 64,900, you may even get 65,100. It's a market order, so you don't know exactly where you're going to trade, but you're telling the system the price that you want to trigger your market order at. Moving down to trailing stop, it's a really great order. A trailing stop is a way to limit your positions and actually try and book in some profits. So what we'll do here is we're going to go market order and we're going to go long half a Bitcoin. We can go and buy and go long here. So in your open positions, you'll have a long of half a Bitcoin. Then we can go to trailing stop. 
If you're going long, then a trading stop is a sell order. It tells the system to essentially trail the price upwards. So let's say we're long at 60, and then the price goes up to 61. We can have a callback rate right here. We're just gonna do 1%. So what that means is that as the price moves up, the trailing stop is going to be below our price by 1% all the way up. So if it goes up to 60, 61, 62, 63 like this, our trailing stop will be 1% below our price at all times. A trailing stop though moves up with upward prices, but it doesn't move down at all. So if you're long at 60 and the price moves up to 65, you will not be stopped out, you will not be sold out of your position as long as it goes straight up there. As soon as the position starts falling, and from 65 comes down 1%, because the trailing stop never moves down, only moves up, you'll be sold out of your position straight away when that 1% pullback occurs. This is essentially a way for traders to lock in profits. So as long as the price is moving up, that trailing stop will be moving up and up and up with the price. And as soon as the price starts moving down, that stop won't move and you'll be sold out. So it's a basically a way to lock in some profits and say, hey, if the price does move down 1%, then that trading stop will be triggered. The important thing to note here is the activation price. So you can actually start the trading stop at a certain price. You don't have to start it at the price that you entered the order at. And to make sure that if you're trading half a Bitcoin long, then obviously you want a trading stop of half a Bitcoin short to close out your position. Also, what's great when trading futures is something called TPSL. And I'm gonna go through to limit order to show you what that is. Now you can actually turn this on. So I'm just gonna click this you can see two options come up. Now, if we just see what TPSL is, it says you can set a take profit or a stop loss before opening a position, which takes effect after. You can also choose last price or mark price to trigger take profit and stop loss orders. So this actually means that instead of opening an order and then trying to go through some trailing stops or stop limits, you can actually open what's called a bracket order. So a bracket around your open position. To illustrate this, we'll put a limit order in and I'm gonna say, I wanna open a position at 60,000 in half a Bitcoin. So if the price of Bitcoin against US dollar hits 60,000, please buy me, I'm just gonna go long here, please buy me half a Bitcoin like this. But at the same time as entering this order, I'm gonna put a take profit and a stop loss. So I can say, I'm gonna enter at 60 right here and I'm gonna look on the system right here and I, I think this is actually an area of support for the chart. So I'm happy for the price of Bitcoin to go down to this level at 55.7. If it goes below that, I think there's not much support up until this level. So I don't wanna lose that money. So what I'm gonna do is put my stop loss at 55.1, that's good for me. I can see that as an area of support. So I'm gonna open up my position at 60,000 right here. And if the price comes down to 55.5, I'm happy. 55.1, I wanna sell out. So my stop loss, 55, 100 like this. And then the take profit, I'm gonna say that we're probably gonna break out and I think the take profit for me is gonna be 63,000, so 63,000 like this. That would be a breakout and I would be happy to enter that trade. So what exactly am I doing? Well, I have an open position at 60,000. I'm gonna go long here. So I'm gonna buy and go long the contract at 60,000, half a Bitcoin. If the price moves up to 63,000, a take profit order will be triggered and it will sell me short and close out my position of half a Bitcoin. If the price now falls down to 55,100, that is a stop loss. And because I'm long Bitcoin, again, I'm actually going to sell out and take a loss in that futures contract that I went long on. This is called a bracket order because you can see you entered at this price and then above and below you have a take profit and a stop loss to essentially tell you exactly what your loss and potential profit is on the trade as soon as you enter the trade. Your take profit and stop loss orders will be down here in your open orders. So the position that would be open is half a Bitcoin at 60 and then open orders is the take profit and stop loss. Of course, they will be open because you haven't traded them yet, but they will trade if the price gets there. And next I wanna come on to grid trading in futures. And this is an option that Binance gives you. So we can actually come up to this grid trading right here. I'm just gonna click on this. Now this is a little bit different, but essentially it uses the liquidity of futures to open up positions for you. This is essentially a trading bot. Now what it's gonna do is enter positions for you in a bracket style. So you're gonna be buying at a certain price and selling at a certain price. 
Think of the order buying low and selling high for you. So let's make it simple and say that the price of Bitcoin right now is 60,000. Well, we can come here and enter a lower price and an upper price. Let's say that we are happy to buy Bitcoin all the way down to 55,000. So if the price gets to 55,000, we're gonna be buying and we wanna sell at 65,000. So what the system is gonna do for us is as soon as the price starts getting below 60, 60 is obviously the midpoint here, as you can see. So 60 is the midpoint. Anything below the midpoint, it's gonna start buying or going long Bitcoin for us. Anything above 60,000 is obviously to the upside of the midpoint. It's gonna start selling Bitcoin futures for us. You can see you can have a neutral position or you can go long or you can actually go short. So I'm gonna just click long here. Bitcoin is in an uptrend, so you would do this. You can definitely go neutral as well. It depends what you wanna do. If the market is falling, then you wanna have maybe a bias towards short. So I'm just gonna go long here. So what we can see is either arithmetic or geometric. I'm happy for arithmetic. Now you can click on these and see what the difference is. With arithmetic, essentially, you're gonna be placing orders in grids just down towards that. So you can see, you can actually choose the amount of grids that you have. So let's say 60,000 is the midpoint. You can put two grids on here. Well, what's that gonna do? It's essentially gonna open a buy order around 55 and it's gonna have a sell order at 65. This is exactly what the bracket order was that we just did. With this trading bot though, you can actually open up to 149 grids. So let's put in here 50 grids. So what does that actually mean? Well, instead of opening one buy at 55 and one sell at 65, you now have 25 orders on each side of the trade. So you've got 24 different buy orders that basically come down in price. So you're gonna have maybe one at 55, but you're also gonna have one at 55.5. You're also gonna have one at 55.6, maybe one at 57, then another one at 57,500. It will just put 25 orders that are all buy orders between 55 and 60, which is the midpoint. On the other hand, it's also gonna put 25 sell orders and increasingly higher prices from 60 to 65. It's really up to you how many grids that you can have, but obviously if you just have two grids, then your profit per grid is gonna be much higher. And then if you have more grids up to 149, the amount of profit per grid is gonna be lower, but you of course have way more trades and way more orders. This only works of course, if the price of Bitcoin moves in a range between 55 and 65. Essentially what the system is gonna do is just gonna enter orders over and over and over again between these two prices. And if Bitcoin moves between 55 and 65, up and down, up and down, up and down, you're gonna make a lot of money because you're gonna be buying low and selling high. Of course, if the price falls below 55, you will have entered buy orders and you will be long and you're gonna be in a losing position until the price gets up to 65 and above 60 going upwards. The amount of initial margin on account is gonna be different depending on how much you trade and you can put that on there for you. And then you can just simply create that bot. And then what that is going to do is come back to the chart. You're gonna have a bunch of long or buy orders all here, and then you're gonna have a bunch of sell orders up here. And really what grid trading does for you is just automate that process of going long low and then going short high and selling out positions and making profit. Like I said, it only works if the asset you're trading is trading in a range going low and then up, down and up. If it obviously goes low and below, you're gonna start losing. And if it actually goes above the price, so if it goes above 65 right here, what you will have done is sold out all of your positions and that's it. You're not gonna be going long again until the price comes back down, but it is definitely an easy way to set up some bracketed trades and some trades at different prices going long and then short as the price rises. That is really an overview of how to use futures and all the different order types on Binance. If you don't have a Binance account yet, definitely click the link in the description to go through and sign up and get started. Subscribe for daily helpful crypto content and I'll see you in the next one.